I love sculpting horses and as part of my journey to learn everything I can about realistic horse sculpture, I'm trying a portrait of the stunning draft horse. I'm using Super Sculpey Clay and I'll share my tools, tips, and what I learned along the way. Two of my sculpting goals are to explore more project types, like low relief and lots of different clays. So I thought it would be great to sculpt in low relief with Super Sculpey Firm Polymer Clay. I'm working off a photo I took at an agricultural fair of a really striking young Percheron gelding. You might remember the last time I sculpted a horse in low relief, it was in Plasilina. I felt that particular clay was perhaps a bit too soft for my low relief projects, so I'm curious to see if a firm clay works better after all. Polymer clays like Super Sculpey require conditioning before sculpting, and that can be tricky with the firm clay without a conditioning machine like a pasta press. I found that working with smaller pieces at a time is easier on my hands. I can roll, squish, press, and roll the smaller pieces until they're nice and flexible, and then join them as needed to make myself enough clay. With it fully conditioned, it will now be easy to work with and will bake properly. At the time I'm filming this, I'm also trying Super Sculpey for a cow portrait, which will be another video. The cow portrait came together easily in this one. <laughs> oh boy, I really noticed the difference in the firmness of the clay right as I was trying to flatten it. This horse is about twice as thick and almost three times as much clay than the cow, and it took tremendous effort to flatten it. A rolling pin might have done the trick here, yet for some reason that rolling pin grew legs and up and ran off. So creative measures it was. After a great deal of effort, I finally had three layers of clay that blocked in the general shape of this big boy. I'm very much in an experimental stage of my low relief journey, and for this project, I'm trying to find a happy balance between additive sculpture, where I build up the form by adding layers of clay, and subtractive, where I carve away the clay to give it a sense of form. Both approaches have their own unique look and unique opportunities for adding texture and details. It gets really interesting when you start to use them together. As a result, I want to encourage myself to have some fun here. As I'm carving away the face, I'm paying particular attention to horse facial anatomy. One of my horse sculpting goals for the year is to improve my head sculpting skills, both from an anatomy perspective and from a personality perspective. There's so much mood and character you can convey in a horse's head, and I want to teach myself how to render that in clay. Two key proportional measurements I learned to check for are the placement of the eyes in relation to the bony ridge at the top of the cheeks and the ear and eye proportions. 
For example, on most horses, the distance from the corner of the eye to the base of the ear is often very similar to the distance of the base of the ear to the tip of the ear. On some breeds, the ears may be shorter or longer, and that's important to render when trying to create expressive realism. It's kind of like the horse equivalent of painting a really cool portrait of your friend, and they notice that you made their ears too small or their eyes a little low. It can make an otherwise awesome realistic portrait feel just a little off, you know? So when I'm working in a realistic style, I check for those first. I'm regularly asked on Instagram what I use for the silver eyes, and they are just steel ball bearings in assorted sizes. A little tip I learned from countless other sculptors. My horse sculptures always look a bit funny right after adding the ball bearings, yet a few layers of clay around the ball bearing starts to convey realism and personality. With some further adjustments to the eyes, nose bridge, and nostrils, suddenly a horse is looking back at me. And with the addition of tiny bits of clay for the eyelids and eyelashes, it really comes to life. I will always be amazed how much that tiny bit of clay at the end has that much impact. Realism sculpting is another goal this year. <laughs> well, actually it's been a goal as long as I can remember. I found one of the most helpful tips I learned for realism sculpture is to regularly check my work against my references. It's at this point I notice, while the general head proportions are still okay, some of the characteristics of the individual Percheron gelding I photographed were a little lost. And yet, I kind of like where it's going. It's less young, tall Percheron boy and more distinguished, mature, shyer gentleman. For now, I'm going to run with that. This is my first time sculpting straight, man-made edges as seen in the halter. I'm paying extra attention to my lines and using straight edge cutting tools to help me create something that looks man-made against all those natural curves of the horse's face. For some reason it felt really challenging, almost daunting, and yet as I put on the last bit of the halter, suddenly it all seems to come together and it looks decent. I check my progress against my reference again and make adjustments to the edges of the face, lips, nostrils, and sides of the ears. I think that really helped bring back some of the likeness of that particular Bertrand. I sent some pictures to a friend who's really excited to paint it should I decide to mold it, so just to be safe, I make some adjustments that will make it easier to mold. Mostly I'm making sure that my edges form 90 degree angles, which will make it easier for me to pull out both the sculpture and the resin cast from the mold without them catching. I'm still unsure if I will mold it as this is really just for practice, yet it's always nice to have the option. Mm -hmm. 
To bake, I follow the direction from the clay packaging. For Super Sculpey Firm, the directions state to bake at 275 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 minutes for every quarter inch thickness of clay. The thickest part of the sculpture is just a little over that, so I'll bake it for a bit longer, about 20 minutes. I place it inside a baking tin that I'll cover with a tin lid and I make sure to use an additional oven safe temperature gauge to make sure my oven reaches the correct temperature. The gauge also helps me watch for any heat fluctuations. And now for the results. I'm so happy with how this horse turned out. I'm glad I managed to bring back enough of the horse's likeness, and yet it also still looks like it could pass as a Shire or other breed, and I love that versatility. Imagine all the painting options. I do feel it was easier to carve cleanly with the firm clay, yet I miss the elasticity of plastilina, so I'm excited to see if a firm plastilina is the cat's meow. I feel like I'm getting so close to the perfect low relief clay. I hope this brought a little joy to your day, and if you'd like to join me on my sculpting journey this year, as well as my other horse and animal projects and other media, I'd love to take you along. And with that, I'll let you get back to your day. Bye!